Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We continue talking football. The English Premier League ended its sixth round on the weekend, and we have the results. Okay, so Newcastle whipping Sheffield United 8 0, a two all draw between Arsenal and Tottenham. Brighton 3 1 over Bournemouth. Aston Villa a win against Chelsea. A win for Liverpool over West Ham. Manchester United one goal to secure those points against Burnley. A 3 1 win for Everton over Brentford. No goals in the draw between Crystal Palace and Fulham. One all draw between Luton and Wolves. What about Manchester City getting that win 2 0 against Nottingham? Let's take a look at how the table stands now. Manchester City at the top of the table. Uh, Liverpool in second position on 16th. Okay, so we're going to have to come back to that table because viewers, I know you've been following the sport. So we'll have to get back to that table. But team, this weekend had so many mouth-watering matches. And the feature match on Sunday was the North London derby between Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur at the Emirates Stadium. What a match it was and it certainly lived up to its billing. But once again, the VAR and the rules surrounding handball have been dominating the headlines. So Lance, what a weekend. But as we said, VAR, we don't get to talk about good sport without VAR deciding to make the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> well, even... Simon Evans? Yes. No, it wasn't Simon. It was Pete Russell. No, it was this Johnny Gray on Friday. Oh. oh. He, 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 he referenced the North London Derby because although he was on the show to talk about cricket, he did mention the North London Derby um, facetiously as if he wanted to discuss that because it was such a big weekend for both teams. But I guess um, both teams gave as good as they got. And um, I think a fair result in the end. Son getting um, on the score sheet. And um, I, I think it was a, a, an exciting match and the kind of match that, you know, we've grown accustomed to seeing when these two North London teams battle. Yeah, really, really positive stuff from Tottenham Hotspur for the start of this season. Arsenal fans will be extremely angry and they were because I reached out to one on the weekend and it's as if I couldn't talk to them, Ricardo. They were so upset over this draw. Yeah, l listen... Pretty good match, um, and it was always going to be a good match because Tottenham have had a very good start to the season. We know the quality that Arsenal possess from last season, and they have brought into this campaign as well. But the the issue of VAR and this handball rule, or what the rules say, or how they are interpreted, is a serious issue. Um, and we look at what happened yesterday with this Arsenal. Um, Tottenham game and Romero clearly that was a handed ball for me couldn't understand first off the bat why it wasn't called on the field of play when to VAR of course decision was penalty as far as I'm concerned the right decision but the real problem now comes in how this rule has been interpreted <laughs> applied inconsistently yes um, throughout the course of the English Premier League. So let's, for example, think about Romero himself. When Manchester United um, played Tottenham, Garnacho um, and Romero handling the ball, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not seeing many differences in, in, in the call yesterday versus the, the, the Garnacho call. Romero, again, the one involved. And that one wasn't called a penalty. Went to VAR as well, and it wasn't given as a penalty. Again, with the inconsistencies, um, you also look at Anthony Gordon um, handling the ball. Again, clear handball, made a pass. Longstaff finishes it off for Newcastle. Goal, but it's not called back because um, Anthony Gordon didn't score right off the bat. The suggestion being that if immediately after the handed ball he had taken a shot and scored, then it wouldn't have counted. But because he made a pass, then it's counted. And I think people are getting confused 
yes. as to how this rule should be applied. Even the Tottenham coach mm. at the end of the contest saying, I really don't know what the rule is. I, I, I don't know. Don't even bother to ask me. And, and I think it's a serious problem around the game um, that because of how the rule is being applied, yeah. it seems to be a serious level of inconsistent application of it. And yeah, a lot of people are confused. I am one of them. Like yeah, but Ricardo, around. you're saying around the game, but you recognize that a lot of the criti criticism has come from the English Premier League. Yes. Uh, generally speaking, in Europe and, and globally, um, the, 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 the effect of VAR on, on the game is, is less contentious. There is something about the English application of uh, the VAR, of VAR um, in the English Premier League that just looks inconsistent. And that is what causes the constant um, complaints and, and quarrels over how, 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 it is, how it is being used. I think the issue is when, it ha when it's applied in one particular way for one player or a certain match, and then it, it's applied differently, it's as if there isn't. So in law, when you think about law, they, they look at all the cases and different rulings in order to make a, a ruling on a particular, a current case. But for us, where VAR is concerned, we can't look at an older um, incident because, of course, it doesn't apply. It's as if it's a brand new incident, there's a brand new ruling, and I think that's where the issue comes up. Yeah, I think it's also interpretation, right? So Lance Whitaker is referee A, and he interprets it in one way. Ricardo Chambers is referee B, and he interprets it in another way. And so what a seemingly similar situation, um, you get different rulings for seemingly similar situations. And I think that is happening quite a lot throughout the, the course of the EPL. And I think we'll see this again before the season is out. We are going to have this discussion a few more times um, relating to how this handball rule is being applied um, throughout the course of the league and the apparent inconsistent nature in which it has been applied. All right, well, team, we're still with the EPL and Chelsea. They suffered their third defeat in six matches, going down 1-0 to Aston Villa at home. Their manager, Mauricio Pochettino, says they need to grow up. I think we, we need to grow up um, like a team, not only in an individual way. I've seen players like Nico that is so young and is, is, is feeling the Premier League and is, uh, is learning. I think in time, in this type of game, of course, that we are competing and we want to win, and football is about to win. But also, players, when they are young, need, need to learn uh, with experience and make a may mistake. Um, yes, that is why it's, we feel disappointed, because I think we are paying too many you know, situations like this. I am agree with you that uh, too many things like this uh, are this, this thing, another small detail, another small detail, and at the end we are losing the game, and, and we are in a situation, you know, that we need to change uh, as soon as possible. Lance, Chelsea, they haven't looked good for quite some time. Now the manager mm. team saying they need to grow up. Well, I, I don't know how the Chelsea fans are digesting this. They are, they are winless from all their games in, in September so far, and they've spent a lot of money. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. So um, Pochettino is on is on is on is on the stri stress because it's hard for him to explain the the dismal form of this team when so much has gone into building their roster. What yeah. more can he do? I want to make a suggestion, right? Um, and mm -hmm. this is more for the Sportsmax Zone than it is for Chelsea um, on Friday. And by the way, the producer of the weekly Sportsmax Class Moments. Um, is a Chelsea fan, and I am suggesting strongly that the best Chelsea goal for September be in the Sportsmax class moment on Friday. Where is he finding that? <laughs> the, the training ground. <laughs> Daniel, don't worry about Ricardo. Focus on other teams and you'll be fine. <laughs> but to, to, be, to, be, to be fair to our Chelsea fans in the office, they've been despondent from before the season started. I know, it's been awesome. Yeah, even, even when the transfer window was being, you know, um, was developing and we saw the process, 
the Chelsea fans just were at a loss. I don't as think to what Manchester United fans should be making any fun of anybody. Didn't, but didn't that's Manchester the topic. United win on uh, at the weekend oh, one nil? Thank God for that. A one brilliant one. Bruno Fernandez goal that should make class moments as a serious thing. Well, I'm going to continue with our programming. The English football season continues on Tuesday when defending League Cup winners Manchester United welcome Crystal Palace to Old Trafford in third round action. The game will be live on Sportsmax starting at 2 p.m. if you're in Jamaica. 3 ECT is break time. <laughs>